Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In this video we're going to cover the intestines of the carnivore which luckily for us is one of the more simple intestines that we have to work with with domestic species. And basically we'll talk about the small intestines, the large intestines, and travel through the root of the intestines as a piece of food leaving the stomach. So if we start with the stomach, we're starting at the cranial end closest to the head. The stomach will get the food coming in from the esophagus and basically at this more distal end of the stomach, if we were to say this portion right here, this is called the pyloric region of the stomach. And this is going to be the, the ending point where the stomach is going to then transition from the stomach epithelium into the epithelium of the small intestines and lead into the duodenum. So that's the pyloric region. What we then have marking or really that the start of the small intestine is this little flexure. It's not super clear in this diagram, but if you were to see it in person, there's a flexure going from the stomach into the duodenum. And this flexure is called the cranial duodenal flexure. And it's actually part of the duodenum, uh, the first part actually. So that's the cranial duodenal flexure. The food is going to travel from the stomach past the cranial duodenal flexure, and then it's going to start going caudally towards the tail on the descending portion of the duodenum. Then it's going to cross from the right to the left, so crossing the median plane right here. We're going to have this crisscross going from the right to the left, and this is called the transverse portion of the duodenum. And then we start going back up towards the cranial sections, and this is called the ascending portion of the duodenum. Right here, where we have another flexure, this is called the duodenojejunal flexure. And this will be the ending point of the duodenum and the start of the jejunum. Before we move past the duodenum, what I will touch on briefly is this very important fold that I'm highlighting in black, which was earlier in gray. This is a fold that we use to orient ourselves. It's really important because it helps anchor the duodenum to this brown structure up here. This is the descending colon. We'll talk about in a little bit, but the descending colon is sitting up here and basically anchoring the uh, duodenum to the descending colon is this, the fold, which we call the duodenocolic fold or duodenocolic fold, connecting the two. So this is really important to, like I said, help orient ourselves because when we look in the abdominal cavity, it's hard to see exactly what we're looking at unless we use specific landmarks. And this is one of those landmarks that we like to use. Next, the food is going to make its way down from the duodenum and into the jejunum right here. The jejunum is this extensive tubular network that's going to basically act as a region that allows increased surface area for the food to finish digestion, for the enzymes to break down the nutrients and absorption to occur in the jejunum. Absorption occurs in several different regions of the intestines, but the jejunum is really providing a lot of surface area and time for the, uh, the enzymes to break down what they need. Once we leave the jejunum, uh, maybe before I get there, uh, I'll touch on just what we have here. This is the mesojejunum, and it's really extensive in the carnivore because if you've seen the other videos, we don't have any kind of uh, ascending colon creating these spirals in the middle in carnivores. In carnivores, we just have this mesojejunum, which is going to be uh, really important in basically holding the jejunum in place and creating this lubricated serosal environment that doesn't allow tangling to occur. What's also really important with this mesojejunum I'll write this here, mesojejunum. What's also really important is that the mesojejunum has a lot of lymph nodes, just like in the other species, scattered around. And you can see these really easily when you look at a live 
not a live specimen, but a fresh specimen. You'll see the mesojejunum. Even live, if you're in an operation, you'll see these. And that's really important as well. Then what we want to see next is the last part of the small intestine. This is the ileum that I have in light blue here. The ileum is marked, basically the borders of it are marked by another landmark fold that we use that I've shown right here next to the light blue. And this landmark fold is called the ileocecal fold. And this is important because it shows the, uh, the border of the jejunum and the ileum, as well as basically where, basically it's showing where the jejunum ends and where the ileum starts, uh, and it's connecting to the cecum. Sometimes the cecum can be really large in different species, so uh, seeing this fold helps us really see exactly where we are in the small intestine and where the large intestine will be starting. Here in green, like I just kind of commented on, this is the cecum. And the food will enter the cecum, but mainly the direction of food is going to go down the ascending colon that I have marked in purple. Even whatever goes in the cecum is going to eventually make its way into the ascending colon as well. This junction point between cecum, ileum, and ascending colon is called the, I'll mark it here, this is the ileocecal junction. Great. So now we've got the ascending colon. What's different in the carnivore is that the large intestine, which comprises of the ascending colon in purple, this transverse colon in black, and the descending colon up here, these are relatively short in the carnivores. So the ascending colon is, uh, especially in a, like cats, for example, will be very short, uh, as will the transverse colon. So basically, the food will go in the ascending colon, called ascending because it's traveling towards the cranial direction. It's going to cross from the right plane towards the left plane. And then basically the descending colon right here. Once it's in the descending colon, it's going to make its way into the rectum. And then finally out the anus. And that's the major landmarks of the carnivore intestines. As for blood supply, it's similar to what we showed in the pig and ruminants. We're going to have two major arteries coming in here. One major artery is going to be the cranial mesenteric artery. The cranial mesenteric artery, it's always uh, easy to tell which one the cranial mesenteric artery is because it's coming in from the caudal direction of the transverse colon. So if we showed it, it would be right here. It comes in caudally to this transverse colon here, and it's going to give branches supplying the duodenum. It's going to give branches that are going to run in towards the jejunum and supply this whole region, as well really just shooting off branches to everything in this intestinal region, except what it isn't supplying is this descending colon, because the descending colon is being supplied by its own blood supply, which is the caudal mesenteric artery. So I'll write that here, the cranial mesenteric artery and the caudal. And that's basically it. So we'll see you guys in the next video.